open up the door. It's Dave. Who? Dave. D A V E. Dave. Right, man. Dave. Dave's not here. <laughs> Have you ever heard of the Mpemba effect? I wouldn't be surprised if you hadn't. It's actually something that a Tanzanian schoolboy came up with. Uh, the guy's name was Erasto Bartholomew Mpemba. And it was in the 1960s, and he had this idea, this theoretical thing, that a hot water will freeze faster than cold water will. And I thought, wow, that's a really interesting thing. And I remember reading about that various times throughout my life. You know, as you go through things, you hear that and you think to yourself, is it possible? Will the molecules move apart differently? Will it work that way? Will hot water freeze faster than cold water? Or will cold water freeze faster? So the principle is kind of laid out here where we're starting with two different temperatures of water and seeing what it takes to get them to zero degrees Celsius. That's kind of the idea. Now I use Fahrenheit instead, but you get the concept. So I thought today I would design a little experiment to find out what the answer is. Now we know that in the truest sense, there is no difference. And actually, uh, actually hot water and cold water should freeze at about the same temperature. There's no statistical difference there. But even so, I wanted to try it out and see how it goes and kind of get a feel for whether this is actually a thing or not, or whether it could be a thing. So what I've done is I've created my own little experiment here. I have three identical glass containers and I'm going to load them with some hot water, some cold water and some room temperature water. And I'm going to put them in my deep freezer. So we'll see how this goes over time. We'll let it sit for a half hour, an hour, maybe a couple of hours, and we'll see which one freezes faster and what the temperature is along the way. So we'll do some measurements, we'll do some things to try to keep track of it and see how it works out. So let's get started with some different temperatures of water. So let's get our water in here. I have my room temperature water here. I'm gonna put some of that in. Oh, that's probably a good amount like that. And let's check the temperature on it. So my room temperature water appears to be around 83 degrees. So that should be good. I've got some cold water here. What I did is I took some water uh, from the fridge and added some ice to it. So it should be nice and cold. Let's see what the temperature is on that in a second. Try not to get the ice in there too. Put approximately the same amount in this one that I have in the other one. Whoops, got a little bit of ice out, I guess. Let's get that ice out in a second. Not put too much anyway. Let's take that ice out. Same thing. Should be pretty close to the same amount. The temperature on that one comes in at oh, 52 degrees, 49, good. 44 degrees. Okay, about 42 degrees or so. Maybe a little under, right around 42 degrees. And then I've got my hot water here that I boiled and we'll put some of that in here. more maybe trying to be as consistent as I can in the, in the amounts that I put in here it's a little off but it should be pretty close so the hot water comes in at I can feel the heat from it 146 154 161 wow okay nice hot water here all right so we'll take these three waters and we'll put them in the freezer here and we'll see how it comes out so let's go ahead and do that right now there. We got the cold water here. Room for everything, so move that over just a little bit. And put the room temperature water right next to it. All right. So we're going to let these sit in here just like this for a little while and see how it goes. So we'll be back in about half an hour to see what's happening. All right, it's been 30 minutes. Let's see what's going on with this. So at 30 minutes, what we got is hot water. It's already down to 60 degree, under 60 degrees. There's no ice forming on it yet, but you can see it's pretty cold. It's 56 degrees. All right, our room temperature water 
a little bit lower. 45 degrees or so, right in there. Okay. Down around 44. Okay. And our cold water. Oh. It's already got ice frozen on the top. Look at that. So let's just see if we can get a temperature reading here somewhere. You can definitely see it's frozen on the top. Oh, I broke through, so let's see what the temperature is in it. So it's, yeah, it's going down there. All right. So we'll let this go for another half hour or so, and we'll see what it looks like after that. But I'm seeing that the cold water is definitely freezing faster. Let's see how it goes. All right, we're in an hour now. Let's see what's happening with these waters. Let's see. Oh, we have a nice crust on there. So we've got something building on there. So that's good. Let's see what the temperature says it is. It's going down. It's a little corner there that I could get into. So let's see from the hot one, we're down to uh, getting close to 32. The room temperature one, feels like it's around the same as far as like the ice flow that's on the top here. So let's see what it says the temperature is. So it's about 33 also, give or take a little bit. Okay, and the cold one is pretty well frozen. There's, there's a little gap, a couple little gaps I can kind of poke into it with this, but otherwise there's really no way to, uh, to do anything with it. This says, it's down to 32, it's about the same temperatures. Look at that. All three of these are at about the same temperature after an hour. That's pretty impressive because this one started off so much hotter. This one was at room temperature and this one was cold. So interesting that they're all at the same temperature now, even though the cold one started to freeze first. So there's an interesting result here at an hour. After an hour, they're all at about the same temperature and uh, they're at about the same freezing point which I find kind of satisfying and interesting in a way. I didn't expect that. I expected the cold one was gonna to continue to be colder and the uh, hot and the, and the room temperature one would probably reach that same point pretty quickly. But in an hour, they're at the same place roughly, just above 32 degrees. So we're at a point where we can look at it and start to draw some interesting conclusions from this. But we're gonna instead wait another 30 minutes or so just to see where it goes. And now it's been 90 minutes. Let's see what's going on here. Let's see how they've all frozen up. So we've got a nice hard surface on that one. It's pretty well frozen through. It's still got a little, you can still, it's a little tacky there. You can see it's a little wet on the top still, but overall it's pretty well frozen. This one at room temperature, same kind of a thing. It's pretty well frozen. You can see it's got a little bit of liquid on the top there. And this one, I would say, is almost exactly the same. So I would argue, if I look at it, it's a nice solid piece all the way through. It's almost clear going through like that. It's a little space in the back where it's still, whoop, I just pushed through and it's about quick right in there. This one, same thing. Okay. And this one, same thing. So I would argue, that there's something interesting going on here. So this proved to be kind of an interesting experiment. If I take these different uh, glass containers that I filled with water, the different kinds, I can see that over the course of 90 minutes, they froze almost exactly the same. There was no difference in how they froze as far as that goes. They had the same level of freezing and they started at very different temperatures. So after about five minutes of sitting out, I just wanted to show you this. The one that was cold water to start, it's still pretty well frozen. You don't see a lot of air going through. The one that was room temperature, this one, you can see that there's a fair amount of air in it and the uh, water has separated a little bit. And you have a little bit of water that's, that's come out and it's actually separated out a fair amount. And the one that started out as hot is even more of that. 
that it's actually uh, released a lot more of its liquid. So it's interesting after a couple of minutes out of the freezer, how different they are. It's, uh, it's kind of intriguing in a way. And a couple of minutes later, I dumped them out of the containers. This is what's left of the one that was the hot water. It was almost all liquid when I dumped it out. This is what's left of the one that was cold water. You can see it's a nice brick, though in the middle, there's no water. It's got a hole in it and there's no water inside. So it's actually hollow inside. And the one that was uh, room temperature, it actually kept the shape too, but it's much more brittle. So what conclusions can you draw from that? This one's actually pretty hard. This cold one actually stayed pretty cold. That's remarkable. So you could absolutely make the case that there is some merit to how the Mpemba effect works. Now, what we actually proved is just that it actually froze a little bit faster. The fact that the molecules were moving around in there and it actually was able to freeze to the same temperature in the same amount of time as the other two is pretty remarkable. So there is some merit to the claim that the Mpemba effect does work. Now, scientifically, it's kind of hard to draw the conclusion that absolutely there's an effect and uh, hot water freezes faster just because the nature of the experiment here that we tried and some of the things we did doesn't really support the claim that it absolutely is freezing faster. But because they all reached the same temperature at the same time, that's pretty remarkable and it does indicate that there is some truth and some merit to this impemba effect. And that's the thing about this particular effect. It's hard to produce in a lab and reproduce the results in a way that actually makes sense. And you have to define up what freezing actually means. What's your definition? Does it get a frost on the top? Does it actually start to draw the layer on there? Or is it getting to a particular temperature so that they're all uniform in the way that they froze? So that's the challenge there is kind of coming up with an experiment that actually does this. But we were able to prove that the hot water does actually get cold, get to the same temperature in the same amount of time as the other two. And that's pretty remarkable in its own. So I would encourage you to try and experiment yourself. Do something at home and try it out and see what you think, see what you come up with. It's kind of interesting to play around with these things. As you can see, I did a very simple experiment here. Three glass containers that are the same that I've labeled up the same way and I had three different temperatures of water. And I used my freezer and of course I had my handy thermometer. That's it. All right, all right, all right. I wanted to take a minute and talk about what I saw in the video. When I started editing it, I was looking at it and thinking to myself, what did I just see? What does that mean? What is it telling me? And I tried to describe it in my uh, overview part that I started to edit in and I realized that I was missing something. And uh, so I did a little more research on the topic and I had expected going in that the Mpemba effect didn't actually exist, that we were gonna see nothing, that nothing was gonna happen and it was gonna be the cold water was gonna freeze first and um, it was gonna be really uh, trivial. But what did happen surprised me a little bit because the warm water, the room temperature water and the cold water all froze to the same temperature in the same amount of time. And that is a really interesting sort of finding. It's an interesting result that was totally unexpected by me. I really had no concept that was gonna happen. But when I saw it, I was like, so what does that mean? You know, how does that work exactly? And I did a little more research on the Mpemba effect and found the Wikipedia article, which I'll link here at the bottom underneath this, uh, this video. But you know, what you find is that there are other factors that may be in play. Like I mentioned the fact that you may have, um, may define what freezing is, what you're trying to get to, what's your experimental uh, parameter, what, you, what's, what you, was it you're trying to show. There's some of that going on. There's certainly some factors to the, uh, how you conduct the experiment, the water you use, how you boil it, things like that, how much water you use, the containers you use, even the freezing conditions that you put it in. Some of those may have a factor. Look, the water uh, may, have, may uh, have some bubbles, there may be some thermal property that goes on there depending on the temperature you take it to. Uh, there could be some impurities that get boiled off, a lot of other factors. So you can think about a lot of things that may impact the study. Now, there's been, many people who have done this experiment and come up with a similar sort of inconclusive finding. But what they find is the same thing that hot water freezes at the same rate that cold water does, which is a really strange thing. And I, I read someone from Physics Today said something along the lines of, I can't determine whether this is trivial or illuminating. And I'll agree with that. I can't really tell what the right answer is here. What, which way does it go? But Here's something interesting for you. I found this other video of a man who takes um, some room temperature water 
and some boiling water and throws it outside on a very cold day where it's snowy and cold outside. And look at the results. Here we are, we have a pot of cold water, just cold water, room temperature water, and we have a pot of boiling water that's kind of cooling down right now. And we are gonna throw the water, we're gonna throw the water in the air and see what happens, okay? Hurry up please, my hands are freezing. Cold water first. The cold water first, we're gonna throw the cold water, and the cold water is gonna be... Whoa! Cold water. It makes a little bit of dust. But now, we're going to throw the hot water. The hot water looks like... Whoa! Uh-oh, low battery, Dad. Okay, it's okay. <sighs> it's okay. So, kind of interesting, right? The cold water just went out and just went onto the, uh, went onto the snow, and that was the end of it. But the boiling water froze when he threw it. How does that happen? It's essentially the impemba effect that the boiling water comes back down to temperature more quickly when it reaches the atmosphere and the cold, the cold air atta uh, attaches itself to it. So essentially, that's the principle of the impemba effect right there. So there is some merit to the impemba effect. It's just a very strange thing that no one can scientifically explain definitively as far as what it does and how it works. So I just thought that was kind of interesting and I wanted to take a moment and just talk about that because it was very confusing when I found my results. I'm like, what in the world happened there? What was I seeing? You can do a very simple experiment at home just with a couple of things, very uh, small scale kind of thing and learn something about the world around us. And I find that to be absolutely fascinating. So we could repeat this experiment. We could try it with some different variables. We could change up a couple of things and see what happens. But I think we've proven the point that the hot water does freeze to the same temperature just as quickly as the other two temperatures, which I think is pretty remarkable on its own. I would absolutely encourage you to try something like this at home and see what you can come up with. Look, there's a lot of experiments we can do. We can actually understand the world around us in a very simple way. This is the kind of cool concept about science and scientific discovery. You can look at the world around you and you can do some very simple experiments to try to prove something or disprove it with sort of simple techniques and just some very simple things. So I just wanted to share this with you because I think it's something kind of interesting and kind of fun and something simple you can do in your own house. You could just try it out and see what you think. What's your point, David?